Okay, guys, we've got our control class in place. It's it's our base class, our, our abstract, abstract class. class for the creation of controls. Yep. So what we're going to do in this video is create an actual control that we can see in our viewport, that we can actually move our mouse over and oh, yeah. see it respond by drawing a border around it. We're going to make a button. Yep, we are. A course, fully functioning button. A fully functioning button. Of course, it's not going to do anything, no. but the event handling is already in place. Right. So it's ready to do stuff if you want it to. Yep. So, um, yeah, with that, let's just go and get started. All right, so let me create my header file and source file. So I'll start out creating my header file. I'll call it button. I know. Very, very. Never saw that coming. Yeah, creative file naming. And our button.cpp file. We'll jump back over to the header file. Let's go ahead and put in our if not defines and define stuff. Nice. And define my button underscore age. And end if. And, of course, we're going to want to go ahead and control or include control.h. Yeah, because we are inheriting from it after exactly. all. Exactly. So to define it, it's simply class button. And we're, we're going to inherit, inherit from, from control. control. Yeah. So let me define my two sections, our public and our protected section. Our constructor is this, going to contain yes. the following. We need our label. Right, so because our label. button is going to have a label. Now, usually right about now, I jump in there and say, Joel, make sure you don't forget to include such and such. But if you go ahead and but, open up control.h real quick. Yeah. There we go. You'll see that we are including string in there. Right, so since that's, we're including control, we're all set. That's right. So we're already set up. So the label, now all we need is a position x, position y, width, and height. Simple enough. Yep. Now we can just go ahead and go jump over back control. over H. and steal these three guys and get those zeros out of there. Yeah, we I don't mean, want after, those zeros anymore. After all, we'd like to be able to actually make the button. Yeah, we don't want an abstract button class. No. That's kind of useless. <laughs> but, uh, but Joel does bring up a very valid point. Mm -hmm. We could inherit from this class. And create an uber cool button that has 2000. gradients and yeah. bitmap support and all sorts of crazy cool stuff. Yeah. So just keep in mind, you can't do that. You can't do that if you wanted to. I mean, this is going to be a very simple button, so if you want to come in here and expand upon it, do it. Yes. Um, so the first thing is we need two variables for our button class. Very important uh, variables. Yes. The first one is going to be called down, and mm -hmm. what it is going to do is it's going to track when the user hits the mouse button down. Right. So because we for the for the press event to be handled, mm -hmm. it's a matter of down up. Right. And that the whole defines click our event click. thing. That's yeah. right. Um, so we need to save whether or not the mouse button was pressed down, um, and then we're going to create our label. So a string label, I don't know why I tabbed these out so far, but there we have our string label, which we need to store the label that we're using, because in our draw control, we actually need to use our label. That's right. Obviously. <laughs> um, so inside of our button, let me go ahead and include button.h. Right. Button.h, thank you. And let me go over to here. Just borrow some of that stuff. Just temporarily. And do <laughs> temporarily. you know what to do. Yes, yeah, scope, scope it out. Scope them in and then go ahead and get rid of all of your terminators. And scoping out the situation. Get out the virtuals. Block it in. I know, very boring, but hey, it's a necessity. What can you do? And there are actually plugins that you can get that will automatically block it in for you. Right. But since we don't have those installed... You're going to have to live with me doing it. Hey, woo. Um, and then we're going to call, in our constructor, this is the first guy we're going to tackle, we need to con oh, call our class. Let's go ahead and class. change the word label there to yeah, okay. LBL. And yeah. then let's go ahead and call our base class. Right. Let's just call control. And we'll go ahead and set its position X, Y. So we simply height. pass all of the stuff that was passed us exactly. down to our control class. So that's set properly now. And then set label. And because if we go back into our button.h, we have down. We need to initialize it. By so default, it's not pressed down. Right. So It would be kind of weird to start the application with the button already down. Yep, that would be very bizarre. <laughs> um, so at this point, we need to update our control. Um, so the first thing is, as I think we mentioned in the last lesson, we're going to call our base classes update control, which updates the inside variable. Um, so pass its state. And then we simply check, is the button inside? That's the first thing. Is, is the mouse, I'm sorry, is the mouse inside the button? That's correct. If it is, then is the button down? Is the left mouse button down? Just so that Joel wasn't, wasn't a little bit mm -hmm. confusing with that, basically when he called controls update state, or update control, update control right. that is what is going to figure out, are we inside or not? Right, and you, we can just go back in your real quick. This is a quick reminder. Yeah, let me, right here, my, right. Sec, my bad. Um, so we call update control, it sets it to false, and if it's inside, it sets it to true. Yeah, that's simple. Um, so back into here, we have if it's um, left mouse button is down, set down equal to true. Otherwise, if it's not down, then if the mouse is not down, and so th this basically what we need to do is we need to find out if right. if if it's if it's down, if it was down, right, if the if button is no down. longer down, and 
it was down, then That's what right. we need to do is set down equal to false. That's right. Say it's not down anymore. And then return true, saying that we just had an event happen. Because typically, you could have extra accessory functions that say what kind of an event it was. But with a button, what kind of event do we have? We have a click. A click button. Yeah. That's, that's all we have. Like, was this a trick question? That's not funny. <laughs> he so freaks out. Before we leave yeah. this, so basically the first time coming through, we hit the one if that's going to set down to true, mm-hmm. meaning, of course, we jump over the else if. Right. And then next time through, we come in there, and at this point, we end up falling through to the else if. Right. So if down was already set to true, now we right. need to set it back to false. We've just had a click, so we're going to return true. Exactly. So let's, finally, we'll return false. Returning. Return and false. Um, it's the so, southern way of programming. That's, <laughs> that's awful. Um, so in our get type, let's quickly block this and we'll just return, return button. button. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, kind of scary. Yeah, it was scary. Now we need to draw our control. And we this is to, really easy. Very, this, very is, simple. this is just going to be a handful of OpenGL calls. That's right, it. that draws... Where uh, like a little quad where our control is. Yeah, and some text over. And some text some, over. Some considerations here. We'd like our button to be semi-transparent. Right. So we need to go ahead and enable uh, GL blend. So we turn that on. Right. And now let's go ahead and set our blend function type. Um, and we'll use the GL source alpha. And then we'll use the GL one minus source alpha. One minus source alpha. And we've alpha. already gone over how this works when defining transparency right. earlier. And then let's disable texture mapping. I mean, you can have texture mapping on again if you wanted to inherit. You know, you can you could leave texture mapping on, but make yeah. sure that you have a um, you have your S and T coordinates in there right. for your quad that you're going to create. Otherwise, it will show. But now we don't weird. have to make no, them. Yes, because we've turned it off. So the first thing is we're going to draw our area that our, our quad that basically fills the extent of our. That's right. So control. we'll go ahead and give it a, a grayish a color. color. Let's say 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7. Go ahead and put the Fs in yeah. the first one, just so we don't get any warnings. Right. Um, and then we'll just set this to a 0.8 transparency. So 20% transparent. Right. Um, let's draw the quad. Let's draw the quad. And for for those of you that may be wondering, this kind of just struck me as kind of interesting. Notice we're using 0.7 for our gray value and then setting a transparency of 0.8. And you might go, why not just set this to, you know, like 0.5 and set this to 1 transparency? Okay. Oh, a value of one, mm-hmm. which would be white. And that would work as well. But basically, this allows us to say, I want this gray color and make it more transparent or make it less transparent, et cetera, et cetera. And that right. gives us more control. We mm-hmm. want this color, and we set its transparency. Precisely. Um, so it's just a different workflow. So we just need four vertices now. Mm-hmm. Um, we have position X plus width. Comma, position Y. Position Y. And then copy and paste. There we go. Move the two widths straight down. Excellent. I'm getting unnaturally fast. At yes, you are. And then just space, space them all out. I was on a good roll, but then I... Uh, oh, you're oh. jamming, dude. You're still jamming. All right. So there we have our one quad. Now no. we want to draw a line. Basically, when the mouse is inside of our button, we want to draw a highlight around it. So what we can do is let's just copy this bunch of code right here. So we're going to draw a border. We're going to draw a border around it, yeah. So that's going to be with line. So we'll just change this to line strip. And with the line strip, we need to connect all the dots, right? So at the very end, we need to connect it back with the first dot. So let's just throw this to our very bottom here. Right. And then what we want to do is we got our lines, right? Yeah. But what if, we want, if we're inside, we want it to be a nice thick border. Exactly. And if it's not, then we want a simple thin border. And we can we could change color if we wanted to. We could change transparency if exactly. we wanted to. Exactly. All sorts of things. So basically, it's just we're checking to see if inside is set to true. Right. Are we and, inside or not? And if it is, we'll just set a couple states. The mm-hmm. GL color will be one. And then, you know, give it a blue tint. So. Right. So let me go ahead and change this. Yeah, so like two, tint. two, and seven. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems good. good. And the line width, since we're inside, let's make it thick. We haven't really shown this one, but I mean, yeah, but it's the, pretty straightforward. Right. We're drawing lines, and with GL line width, we set whether the line is, well, thick or thin or something. <laughs> there you, know. you go. I mean, it's pretty That's straightforward. Awesome. Um, so if we're not inside, then let's set the transparency down a little bit so it's not... The main thing is we want it to be less bold. So we, we can do that via transparency. When your mouse is inside, we want to bring your t- attention to that. To that button. control. That's right. right. Um, so there we have it. So we have those two. The final thing, well, the only thing we have left to do is draw our text inside of our button. Right. And, and this is really easy to do. Is, why is all this so easy? I don't know. <laughs> it just, it's just—it's so because easy. OpenGL is so awesome. That's yeah. why. Very powerful and very easy to use. Right. So let's set our text color to that gray color. 
Um, Which only makes sense. Yep. Completely opaque, though. You'll notice he said that yep, back Yep, I said one. that to opaque. You don't really want transparent mm-hmm. text, and it all no. just has to be added together, and then it's, yeah, kind yeah. of ooey-looking. Yeah. <laughs> ooey-looking. <laughs> so nice. anyways, here, what we um, need to we do We want to center our text on our button. That's right. So what we're going to do is create two variables, um, text X and text Y. Right. And this is simply going to add um, our position and this take our width of the control, mi- uh, width of the control minus by the width of, of the our text, text divide and divide by two, two. Mm-hmm. and that will center it for us. So of course we have that awesome text width function. Yeah, I knew it would come in handy. And then we just pass it our label dot data, and that's it. Uh, divide by two. Right. Beautiful. Copy and then paste. we copy paste and the same idea except wise and height. <laughs> Height and get text height. And then finally, we just print it. And since we have our GL engine, we can simply solve, draw text, text X, text Y, and then simply pass it label.data. Awesome. So let me see how many errors I got. Oh, wait. Well, no, no. That, that B does not count. <laughs> I put that on the very... <laughs> oh, that was great. Oh, man. I do have one error because I put a semicolon in there. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. All right, all right, very only nice. Only one error. That's not too bad. No, not at all. Um, now, let me go let's ahead, go ahead and, and take, basically just take control.h and change that over to, to an include, include button. button. Could have just replaced the word <laughs> control.h. I just wanted to after SDL. I don't know why. Okay, Mr. Okay. Special. All right, so uh, now let's special. let's just show them how. There's two ways we can go about creating the button. One here. and two. Yeah, that's right. Number one <laughs> is we can just create a new button. Right. Number two is we could use Our the add, add control, control to mm-hmm. do it. With add control, remember, it's going to be spaced at, like, what was it, 5-5, five, five, and it's just going to keep Moving creating down. them vertically. It's a hack, essentially. It, it's Joel's little hack. Yep. If we wanted to just use, you know, create the new button, right. then what we can do is we could specify exactly where we wanted hey, it. Let's do it both ways. Okay, cool. Um, we can create a button, um, and I'll create a new button, and let me call this um, hit me. And then we'll put this over to the right a little bit. So let's put this at like 250, um, five down, yeah. and then width of 200 and height of maybe 50. Sounds awesome. And then let's do it the other way. So that's with add control. And then we'll create a new button. And we'll call this run away. I don't know why. I just um, And then we'll... Zero, zero, comma zero, zero, because the position's irrelevant. Right, and then we'll just use the same. Awesome. It, it really is that easy at this point, guys, mm-hmm. to create buttons. I mean, and that's it. Everything is already handled for us. Yeah. Unless we have um, events that we want to handle, it's that simple. Um, so let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Dun, dun, dun. Check it out. Run away, and look, I put my mouse in it, it gets that nice, bold area, mm-hmm. and I can move it around. Notice our FPS is kind of getting blocked, though. So let, you want to move this let's down Let's just go over okay. to control.h real quick and change the 5.5. Five. Oh, and look at this. Ooh. We get a nice little... Somebody's uh, not being taken care of properly at the end. Mm. Uh, we'll look at that in one okay. second. So let's um, go ahead and make it look nice. Yeah, let's go to our control. Before we stress people. over crashes. Yeah, crashes are bad. Change it to like 25. Okay, 25. That's good. And let me just run this real quick so you can see yeah, what it looks like. So we can see the crash one more yeah. time. So it's moving it down. Okay, nice and clean. Excellent. And Lock. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Pain. And I think I actually know where this is. Um, at the very end, we're looping through all of our controls and deleting them. But the problem is that in our control.cpp, if we just come up to here, in our destructor, notice we're moving it from the list. Right. And then we're keeping, we, after we remove it from the list, we go to the next one, but the whole link list, because it's a link list, essentially. And what's happening is you're breaking that link. So what we need to do here is kind of just change this around a little bit and have our iterator start at the beginning again. Because basically we just want to loop through every single one. Right. So something like that. Very nice. Um, and that should fix it. There are other ways to do that, but this is one common way to do it. So now we have a runaway or hit me, and when we exit, no errors. Yay! And actually one more thing I want to point out. Um, it is Our text is a little bit over to the right, so our get width is a little bit messed up inside of our GL engine. Yeah, it- it's almost hard to tell. but It's very I, hard to tell. I can see it a little bit better with Hit Me, but it, it's there. Mm-hmm. It's there. Um, so let me go back into our GL engine. I, I just have a sharp eye for something like this. It's just, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It's, it's just me. So in our here, what we're going to do is add one to our text width, and that will basically bump Provides it over like a buffer. Yeah, that, that'll work. <laughs> and if we link that and run it, I actually, I like that a lot better. Nice and centered. Yep. Awesome. So I think with that, we have a working thing um, for our cube. You can use buttons. They don't do anything. But oh, let's see. Can you rearrange? I don't think you can actually get part of the cube behind where the button's at. Just oh, try. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, the button is indeed transparent. There. Right. That's cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Okay, so with that... Because it makes our whole buttons blend in with our scene kind of sort of. Absolutely. So with that, you guys now know how to create button controls quite easily. Right. And you can simply just include your controls.h and buttons.h now in your own applications and put buttons wherever you want. Yeah. So with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.